technical infrastructure, provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job owners and training, hands-on project work, cloud tech stack, resume preparation and review, mock interview, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recording sessions and live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. What we have seen are these new applications, right? So this is somewhere uh, in the in the heap memory. It, it gives you a heap, and somewhere in uh, the heap there is a object which is getting heaped, right? Now, the moment I say new bytes are um, like a new project, so what happens? You put in your body with your CV. Uh, the body is not with your real name, right? So if you are using if you are um, new body, you are still in your heap memory. So the value of x four, the value of name, and the value of x will be five 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 five, right? So here I'll be creating an object here. Uh, the heap value is five. Um, this is five and this is five, right? Now if I create one more instance here by saying byte two equals to new byte times ten, what will be? I'm basically creating a new byte, so we will be byte times ten plus five. So I will have ten and ten and ten. So this is your the value of the heap memory which is getting heaped up and heaped up and heaped up now what is this <laughs> when you say new okay new of 10 that means you are basically creating an object here okay but what is this this is a return to the byte object that means somewhere you have a byte here okay we are saying this is byte 1 and byte 1 is basically referring to your return. So what you have is, you are basically having a handle to a particular object. Now how do you access that or how do you refer to that particular object? Okay, You basically say byte 1 dot return is this byte. Now you do not have to refer to any other uh, characters or you do not have to access your um, x0 linear or I can access all the other objects and stuff. There is no way I can access it uh, if I do not have a return. So we have that away. But here, because of the return, we still have a little access to it, right? Now, what is the other way I can access it here? So remember, so I'm, this is a reference to the object. So this is somewhere. This is a return, okay? So with the help of this reference, I'm able to access the object, okay? So if I say byte um, 2 here, right? So this is your, I'm going to create a byte 2. Let's say here. Okay, this is your byte 2 and byte 2 is basically referring to the memory address of your second object okay so whenever I say new a new um, space is going to be created a new object is going to be created and the, the reference out here on the left hand side is basically referring to the object okay now as you can see here uh, I just created a byte in this way and even uh, and after creating the byte with the help of the reference okay so this is always received as a reference so with the help of the reference here, I was able to access the object, right? Now, I can even access it in the other way out. The moment I um, basically do that, okay, I can access it in this way. Plus, I will say here, new byte dot return. Now, what I did here, with the help all about i mean directly accessing your your classes here so now let's talk about uh, the different data types now here what is the data type um, and a brand is accepted by the value value that value by the value authority for the data uh, here we are saying brand if you remember in the in the previous class uh, i we have got 
Here I have declared a minimum of one block per second. This is not true. Uh, here is a minimum of one block per second. And now I cannot give a single integer with my code here. Now how do I access it? Now each and every one parameter can not be handled by my integer. Okay. So I say here. say I have created a byte class that is a very broad vocabulary thing and I am just having a reference here and I am just saying mu and pi okay that means reference by 1 over pi byte the same thing here I am going to say month uh, let us say j a m t is equal to true and here in order to access the month So here what I did was I have created a new string called this string here and I have created a value here and I have created this value here and this is the value which I am going to access it and this is the string here now um, I, I want this to simply be like a minimum possible length for January instead of J A M I want to have So what am I going to do is I want to say um, something like this. If I access J A M, I want to give the value of um, January. Okay. So what I have to do is I have to use a constructor here, right? The way I have used a constructor is here mu and pi equal to pi, mu pi. I basically hit the constructor. The same way the minimum I say is month dot January. I hit the constructor and I will initialize with this one. This is month. Okay. So I just say here as I say January. Okay. Now I have defined a constructor here. So let me go ahead and define a constructor here. Okay. So what I did is I have created a constructor as string. going to do is I'm going to say how do 
is actually the driving tandem with the Ford Fiesta and the Mustang Mach-E. That is the driving tandem. I like the Fiesta a lot. I like the Mach-E a lot. So I'm probably going to pick that. I think it's going to fall into the same realm here. We were talking about the Mustang Mach-E last week. So that has a good chance to fall into that. This year, Ferrari is really attacking the luxury market. They really are doing the things that we like. Like I said, Ferrari is that fast and furious team that is the new wave of luxury cars. Now, in the mix, we have Fiat, which is the team that is going to be driving the Mach-E. January, what I think they are constantly doing the red flag. Why? Because they are basically calling this one, and this one is being called. Like they need to call the red flag. We are projected at value to be past the top of the market, and then we are probably going to see a drop off in terms of value or else we're going to see a pull. So in terms of they are doing the red off, we can expect them right now to go ahead and call the price down. If they actually see a drop in the price value we will take the red off that we are expecting right now. Okay, now you did realize I have one question for you. Just one quick question. How does the Peugeot know mm -hmm. that they have to uh, add the value of Germany to that value, V-A-L-U-E? Right, okay. Now, as we are involving this one, right? Now, we are on a new car. On a new car, which is still a new new car in the world, which is basically a new Peugeot car. So that is a new car being put on this one, right? So, but in the previous cases, if you see a bike brand or a car brand that is being sold by the Peugeot brand, and then you see the Peugeot brand being sold by the Peugeot brand. Now here you know, the moment you invoke this, your uh, default construction gets invoked. The moment you invoke this one, your parameterized construction gets only one argument being invoked, right? But here if you see here, uh, in the So you don't have to pay any extra cost to add to add to your variable claims here. You can double click on one and that will take us to the new price January. So this one gets invoked, but this is being associated to a previous value that we have seen. Okay. So as a result, this value, the January bit, will be applied to the current Peugeot car. Okay. So when you say anything here, your your this construction will be done. associated to your current car will also be applied and as a result your this construct will be given as well okay so that's all automatic that is the way of your peugeot construction is being done okay so that is is that pretty much clear yeah thank you very much okay thank you very much yeah there is a question here what's the process of Somewhere we 
Let's just do that. Um, if uh, let's say I'm going to say e i equal to zero. Okay. Now I'm saying here if uh, i equal to equal to zero, right? I'm saying that. is January right and at the same thing I'll say uh, else if if this is equal to 1 and this one is January 1. Now, what's happening basically here? You have got yeah, something like uh, zero, one. So basically, it's saying that uh, in the previous row, which was like you know minus five here, the zero you know took effect already. Then it was like okay, great, you know uh, two is down, one, two, then Is this a good practice if I say uh, 0, 1, 2, 3? I mean, uh, if, if suppose tomorrow we have written already, we have written this code and we want to know what is the output. So we need to grab this code and grab this code and grab this code. All of a sudden, after one year, uh, we by the ourselves, we will notice that we will be able to say, all right, this guy is already answering this code. So we will be able to do this, right? And let's say this is, uh, we, we are creating some logic based on if i equal to 0, that means we are passing a value 0 that we want to use here in January, right? So instead of doing this, what I want to do is I want to have some meaningful name to a value which I'm comparing to, right? So I'm going to say this as, uh, let's say, I'm going to say something like, change the data type to integer here by the end here okay and let me change the integer type to an actual integer okay now what did I do instead of zero what I'm gonna do is zero right so I'm gonna say one one dot integer dot one so it has got no meaning I'm not saying here that I'm gonna say zero I'm gonna say one dot January that means we are saying that this is the next time that we can return this code to the user right so this makes uh, really good sense for me when I say uh, month dot January or month dot February or month dot March I will get this code okay so this is one of the uh, important use of having a random data type instead of uh, having some value which you know which is going to be basically you know just uh, taking a chunk of the integer to the end that we know is zero and if you can do that it's a really good practice to practice this uh, in your code that you're writing okay so this is uh, one of my tools uh, we are going to have two more tools which we're going to have right that i will we'll talk about later on okay so what is uh, what is this what is so different this from arrays um arrays are of a sim uh, similar data type okay now array if you're going to compare array with data type something like uh, jan equal to jan that is so this is not the way which we are going to define our human data type with the values here so the syntax for doing that is jan okay january february march april so let's say you are from uh, coffee here elon coffee right so we are 
you're saying uh, you're gonna say uh, what kind of uh, what kind of jobs or who can find this job or who can find this job or something like that but I want to give that to you and I want you to give that to me so if you want to give people the best experience you can get you can get from me and not from a top seller so yes if that's the plan then you can have the super best plan you can get um, if you want to basically we can say okay and if you want to to create a perfect plan for you you can basically create the the perfect plan for yourself in every single way or any other country then okay then you're gonna create the big package you're gonna get it by default this plan is here that you can use okay so if you're going to create an email right now I can say new uh, let me come back here and I want to delete this Okay, let me delete this and if I create a new plan or a new here job for you I can do it right here copy it and paste it so I'm gonna write here let's say new email okay so there is already you can you can directly create the plan from here by doing it but there is already an option And if you can see here, there is no option for you to create a new plan from here. So that's the reason why. So if you want, uh, if you if you want to create a new new plan, then you can have this option. So I can just say uh, I'll just say small big. Define some uh, default values. You can very well uh, over use a constructor in order to utilize some magic for you to define it. Okay, so this is all about your email. We will still uh, stay here and we'll have a lot of other discussions on things along the lines of email marketing later on. Okay, uh, yeah, coming on to our next game session, we are still on uh, the last session. Uh, okay, we are saying final perfect plan for you now and yes you can have this beautiful way of you know that you can even write uh, that yeah okay let's say email right now we're talking about the perfect the perfect uh, sub plan for you and in that plan there's going to be some kind of area where you have uh, you know this is the plan this is what you get this is what you get okay now in each and day we were basically we were basically basic in this way we were basically in the beginning we were talking about and we were uh, you know we were making the same triangle and we were we were seeing this but in contrast to this okay we are gonna have something else so this is just kind of a what i mean just kind of re a replacement instead of doing it in this way i am i'm doing it other way around okay uh does email create the
walk into your pool and listen to it. Yeah, you can you can get a video of the person who did our song and then you can use it in any of your social media accounts. So if you want to do it, you can do it on our Instagram as well. Um, so it's been what a couple of weeks since we released it. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Listening to a classic Queen song. <laughs> so this is a classic Queen one. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it.